And now for the P scale, what we have to do is we have to also fade the size of these uh, curves as the lining progresses through the simulation. So this will be done in the same manner that which we did the amplitude for that DER vector that was used in the force in the dotnet. And we will use a solver for this. So let's go look for our simulation points up here at the top. Let's grab the CMPTs and bring this over. And just copy this object merge and paste this here. So these are our simulation points. So we will use the same transfer thing that we did earlier. And let's set these to have a color of black. So after our set N, let's set this to black. Copy this over and set this to white. And we want to attribute transfer inside a solver. So drop down a solver from here. Place this into our second input. And let's drop down an attribute transfer. Select our CD and let's plug our second input inside here and maybe drop down an output node as well. So let's promote this distance threshold to the top level. Let's go up and for my solver edit parameter interface and let's drop our distance threshold inside the root and hit accept. So now let's go up and let's start maybe with a value of 1 and see what this will give us. So if I play the animation we can see that maybe this is a little bit too low. We are not capturing all of the points. So maybe just increase this threshold. Okay, so let's try maybe a value of four or three. So a value of three in my case will be fine. So again, we have to be mindful that our timing of the simulation changed. And let's go ahead and also copy the time shift and the retime node. Let's do an action and create reference copy and bring this over to the simulation point. So let's drag these out and let's place them after the sympathies and before the color. All right, so if I preview now, our, our animations should match. So now we can say that when these uh, points receive a color value of 1, they will start increasing in age. So drop down an attribute wrangle after the transfer and say that if your color is bigger than 0, then I will set the age to be plus equals 1. So if I go up and resimulate, when they turn white, they should start increasing in age, as we can see here. Let's go back and now we can use this age to create the animation. So let's drop down an attribute VOP and this will be our P scale. So set P scale and plug this in our template points and let's step inside. Let's do a bind and grab this age and I will fit this to a new range and promote the source max. And if I place this directly into the P scale, let's see what happens. So bind export this to the P scale. And let's go up and let's preview the copy to points. And maybe let's increase, let's start with a maximum value of maybe 25. So now what we can see is they are slowly incrementing over time all the way up to a value of one. So let's add a global multiplier for this P scale. Let's get rid of this geometry VOP and drop down a multiplier after the fit. And let's promote the second input. And I will set this to global multiplier. And let's go up and start with a value maybe of 2. And let's also maybe visualize this from our camera. Okay. Uh, maybe I think 3. And let's go back inside and before this global multiplier, let's drop down a ramp from the fit. So set this to a spline ramp and I'll rename this to maybe a maybe a ramp age and also give this a name ramp age. And let's go up. So I want these to start fast and die out slow. So I will adjust this ramp until I get the desired result. But we should start from something that looks like this. So now over a period of 25 frames, 
these will start with a p scale of value and maybe over five frames they will increment or rather increase to a value of one and then slowly decay over another maybe 20 frames all the way down to zero let's set all of these handles to be b spline and uh, just adjust this a little bit so create something more smooth and maybe interesting so maybe something like this okay and let's preview this I think these are starting a little bit too uh, too big okay alright so hopefully we can uh, you can kinda see what I'm going with now okay let's preview with the geometry as well and uh, let's go back and use the low quality geometry just so we can uh, play back faster okay we will come back to this p scale in a bit let's maybe turn these into volumes now let's drop down from here a transform and I want to overall just move these a little bit slightly below our uh, geometry so for this transform I will maybe decrease the translate y just push this in uh, inside the ground a little bit so maybe negative 0.2 alright and uh, let's give all of these lines some geometry now and we can see that we are only working with two points per line let's drop down a resample and let's preview the result maybe a length of 0 0.1 uh, maybe 0 0.05 will be better so essentially where there is a point here we will have now instead a voxel so if I drop down an attribute wrangle and I just want to create a density attribute which I will just set to 1 I can from here drop down a volume rasterize attribute and let's set the particles particle scale to be equal to my voxel size for now so drop this here and place a relative channel so now these are linked let's set this back to 0 0.1 and rasterize the density as attribute so now if I preview this we should have smoke and maybe let's drop down this to 0 0.5 so we have a finer volume and also maybe I want to taper these towards the ends a little bit so from this resample I will generate a curve view attribute and instead of giving this uh, density a flat value of 1 let's map this to the curve view attribute so let's set this equal to ch ramp and I will set the name to be density ramp and map this to the curve view so if I create the channels let's go back to the volume rasterize and see what happens let's maybe turn off the geometry so I think this is the other way around let's reverse the ramp okay so now our edges are sharp so we can see that we also have some points over here that uh, shouldn't uh, be rasterized and we can clean this up if maybe so maybe here after we set the p scale I can drop down an attribute wrangle and say that if your p scale is zero then we will remove that point so let's do remove point zero and pt num all right and let's go back to the rasterize so now we get rid of these uh, small points okay so this is looking good let's go in our camera 